Hey y'all, it's Shirley Moth. Welcome back to Mask Monday. I want to show you how I turn this into this. Last week, we pretty much painted this guy almost all the way. Um, we just have a couple more things to do. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I finished the mask and everything. Um, a lot more time has passed than a week for us. We did a lot of stuff in between. We had Days of the Dead con and everything. Um, so it's been like three weeks, I think, since I saw this guy. Um, that's also why it's way more of a mess than the last time you saw it. Um, but let's go ahead and just jump in and let's start with the eyes. So what, how I'm gonna do the eyes, I was trying to decide if I wanted to use ink or if I wanted to use like acrylic paint. And I'm gonna use acrylic paint just because of the the color that I want. Usually with the ink, it's nice because it's a lot more translucent and everything. Um, but I'm gonna use like pretty diluted paint anyways. So in order to do that, I'm, because it's been like three weeks since I painted this mask, I'm gonna spray it with some adhesion promoter. Um, it's Tim Gore's adhesion promoter from uh, Monster Makers. That's gonna help the acrylic paint stick to it. If this was like fresh latex paint, like within like 72 hours of putting the latex down, I would just paint with the acrylics and it would work out fine. Um, but again, because it's been so long, this latex is like totally cured. Yeah, that's good. That's all I really need. I'm only gonna do the eyes. It's super milky right now, but it's gonna dry translucent. I'm gonna grab the paint. I'm also gonna use Tim Gore's Bloodlines for this. Let me see, I want Vile Green. This is Injury Ochre. And um, White, here we go, Old Bone White. Both Justin and Tim Gore have really cool names for their paints. To mix a paint like this, like I said, I want it to be really like pale and muted. Um, so I'm always gonna start like with like white uh, in the cup. And then I'm just gonna tint up to the color that I want rather than trying to kind of find a color I like and then like tint it up with white. Um, I just like starting with white as the base and then just adding a little bit of color until I like it. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of the, what is it, the injury ochre. All right, so I got a pretty good like pale yellow. I'm gonna add in some vile green. I just waste a lot less paint this way. Just go and just inching up with it, little tiny drops, tiny drops until I like it. I just end up wasting way less paint, just like chasing it. Cool, so I'm liking that color. The acrylic paints are water-based, so you can just like thin them out with distilled water as well. So as you can see now, the the adhesion promoter is like totally translucent. Um, I'm not upset with what it did to my paint job at all. Um, it did leave it pretty glossy. Um, if you wanted to be a little bit like only get it just on the eyeballs or something like that, I could have done it with a paintbrush, but I actually like really like the gloss around the eyes and on the eyelids and all that. And eventually I'll make the eyes super glossy um, with the five minute epoxy. But um, I do like the gloss on the eyelids and everything. And eventually the mouth will be kind of glossy like that too. But I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit longer before I start putting on the paint. It still feels tacky, but I, I want that. But what, it's not leaving residue on my fingers. So I'm kind of touching it. It feels sticky, but then I, it's not leaving any. So I'm confident that I can paint on it now. And um, I think I'm gonna dilute this even more. But I do want it to be pretty like diluted. It'll kind of help with the translucency as well if it's not like super thick. Um, obviously the paint just dries out, but it'll help it flow through the uh, airbrush. I don't want it to be too runny though so that it'll spread. Like I want it to stick on there. I just went in, uh, finished doing the eyes. It did take like quite a bit of the translucency away. Um, once I gloss them, it'll really help make them pop and, and be cool like that. But I am just really quickly, I'm gonna clean up my airbrush and I'm gonna go back in with that crimson red, uh, just around the eyelids a little bit and just to smooth out the edges a little bit. Um, Cause there was like a decent amount of overspray on the green. Um, you can see kind of, and, and it's not too bad cause a little bit of that color is cool cause it's almost like a glow. And so it's not a big deal. Like I'm not insanely afraid of the overspray on the eyes because I like having a little bit of touch of the color, but I'm just gonna go back over it with that, uh, that red, which is kind of pinkish on top of this. But I like the color. It's just really, right now it's really, really opaque. So it, it, set, it pulls apart from the mask a lot. 
Once I kind of touch in with the little red bits, possibly some black, and then gloss them, it'll really help with that. But I'm gonna take this top cap off. And when you do this, um, it helps you like get like way tighter lines, but the needle's like completely exposed there. So you just have to be careful not to drop it, but that's gonna help me get like just way tighter. But I am gonna go in with a little black on this. Um, and that's just gonna help pull the colors together a little bit more. And I'm especially gonna try to get black like in the deep like crevices of the, the eyelids and stuff. Um, Cause that's something that was kind of just there naturally from the rub out that I've, I'm losing now. Um, that I wish I wasn't losing. So I'm gonna try to just go in with just a little black and that, that'll hopefully be a good, good idea. <laughs> Waiting for this to shut up. There we go, all right. Um, so I'm all done, I'm, I'm just calling the paint job. Um, as I said before, I'm not 100% happy with the eyes. If this was like not being videotaped, I'd probably just spend all day going back and forth on stuff and like it would be like five or 10% better. Um, but for this video, it's good enough, I'm happy with it. I like the color, I like the contrast. I find that like if I put a little bit of every color everywhere, almost usually all the time, it just helps it all kind of pull together a little bit better. But um, that really helped with making it look a little bit more round and translucent and contoured was just hitting it with little spots of uh, the red color on the actual eyeballs as well. I'm gonna go in with the adhesion promoter again um, in the nostril and the mouth just so it's extra glossy. And then I'm gonna seal it with a glossy sealant as well so that the whole mask should be fairly glossy. Just cause I know people will ask um, about the PSI that I'm using. Uh, I changed the PSI up like a whole lot. So it just depends on what you're trying to do is what PSI I'm gonna have it at. But you don't wanna get one of those like small makeup uh, airbrush compressors if you're gonna be spraying latex paint or this adhesion promoter or the sealant that I'm gonna use. Anything that's like glue and, and thick. Um, you're gonna need to be usually around like 40 to 60 PSI at least for spraying latex and stuff. And then it's kind of just however I want it. If, a lot of times I'll go just down to like 20 or 15 with inks and stuff like that. Um, you don't want to go too high with that because it's thin and it'll spread. Um, but it needs to be pretty high for spraying latex and sealants and all that. So I'll change it all the time. But then also the reason why I thought about it is whenever I'm cleaning it, I'll just like push it way up to like 90 PSI um, to clean it out. And that's just going to help me spray everything in there out of it. So I'll just kneel down and be adjusting that like all the time. But the mouth, the nose, and the eyes should be, and the eyelids, you know, should be more glossy. And then I'm gonna go in with super gloss on the teeth and gums and the actual eyeball um, so that those will pop really hardcore. So it's just like kind of three layers of gloss going on right now. Um, but again, I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit, then I'll seal it, and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, um, so it dried for a bit. Um, same thing, just like before, it dried super translucent and glossy. Um, so it has a nice gloss um, to like the mouth area and the, in the nose. So I'm liking that. Um, now I'm gonna cover the whole thing in a finish. So I'm gonna flip this off. Okay, so anyways, uh, I'm gonna seal this with gloss finish. It just says GLF. This is a mixture that I made. Um, it's just half mask latex and half polyurethane. Um, polyurethane is used to seal like wood floors and stuff. So it's uh, stretchy because wood, you know, expands and contracts and everything. So it'll be stretchy enough for your mask. And of course, latex is stretchy enough. Um, so it's going to spray on. It might be a little bit milky, but then it'll dry translucent as well. Um, the way that you choose like the, the finish, be it like matte or satin or gloss or whatever, is the polyurethane that you buy. Um, you get polyurethane from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And um, you can get matte, you can get satin, you can get gloss, you can get high gloss. Um, this is just like a regular gloss that I mixed with the mask latex. And again, I'm not going super thick with it, um, but I do want to cover the entire mask with it, but it's not going to get milky everywhere because I don't want it to. I'm just going to move a little quicker. Covered the whole thing in the gloss finish, just kind of going over that spot where I did the adhesion promoter, it did dull it out some. Um, because the finish I'm using is just like less glossy than that adhesion promoter is. Once I was done kind of covering the whole thing, I went back in again. I got the eyelids, I got inside the nose, I got the mouth, I got over this stitchy area. Um, and again, I just kind of went heavier on those spots. So it's actually a little milky in those spots right now. It's gonna dry translucent 
and then um, once it's totally dry, I'll feel it, make sure it's not tacky or anything. Um, and then I can do the hair and the, the gloss of the eyes. Um, I'm gonna put a fan on this, let it dry for a while. Cause again, the big thing, once I gloss the eyes and everything like that, I'm not worried about the mouth because the mouth is like paint from three weeks ago. Um, but the eyes, is brand new paint. And once you start doing that, you can just rip that paint off as you're pulling it around. So I wanna be extra careful, put a fan on this for like half an hour at least till it's super dry and I'm, I'm comfortable enough to do the gloss on the eyes. All right, so we're gonna throw the finishing touches on this monster mask. Um, really simple, I'm just gonna mix up some five minute epoxy from DevCon and then I'm gonna paint it on. It's called epoxy resin clear. There's other kinds of epoxy and you can use pretty much any of them but um, Again, a lot of the stuff that I've done in this video, I stole directly from Ed Edmonds at Distortions Unlimited. And um, he always says they've always used DEF CON because over years it doesn't yellow. He's been doing it for 40 years uh, plus, so I trust him. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mix this up. And um, you wanna mix it uh, one to one. A few, like three kind of solid, maybe four. I'm gonna go ahead and just mix this up. You wanna mix it up really, really well. You're gonna mix a lot of air into it, so it's gonna get like murky. And they're like little tiny air bubbles in there. And once you mix it, you have to move really, really fast. And um, if you get to the point where it's setting up on you, you just gotta stop, because then you're gonna pull it and you're gonna clump it up and it's gonna get really messed up. So I'm gonna move really fast now to get both of these eyes done. Um, I finished up with the basic glossing of the eyes. I want it to be pretty even. You don't wanna go over the same spot too much um, because you can really start to clump it up. But now I wanna go just on the eyelid and get a nice little shiny eyelid, like just on that eye line really is what I mean, the watermark. And now it's not totally set up, so I'm gonna just grab it a little bit in here, give him some nasty super gloss here inside the nose. And you don't wanna do this anywhere unless you want it to look wet. All I'm gonna do is the teeth now, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of modify this acid brush, and now, I'm gonna grab it nice and tight and I'm gonna cut it at an angle so I have a little bit more of like a point to work with. So I'm just gonna mix up, I'm just gonna use the other half of this same salsa cup, mix up a little bit and do the teeth. And again, if you end up taking too long and it starts to set up, you can really mess everything up. I just wanna cover everything with an even coat, really good in the gums, got all the teeth. And once you've gone over an area, I kind of mentioned it before, but try not to go over it again. That's done. I'm completely done painting this mask. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that totally dry, and then I'm gonna add some hair. Uh, might do a little super gloss just around these areas. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, I was gonna try, but like, that's, you could look like I'm not, you know, so I'm done. That one's done. I think anyways that I'm gonna throw some hair on this. Um, I'm gonna use this braid hair. Um, this is super cheap and it's really long. So when I put this on, I'm not gonna use latex. So what I actually use whenever I do the braid hair is uh, this like silicone. Um, it's made for like, uh, sealing up windows and stuff like that. Um, but this is just pure silicone, uh, clear. So just make sure that it's clear and then just pure silicone. And then you gotta get this like um, caulking gun. This is sticky right away and the uh, braid hair will just soak into it basically and it'll hold it and I can move really quickly with this stuff. But I think I'm, I'm gonna start anyways just putting like a long bead of silicone there and then just gluing hair to either side of it. And then I, once it's on there, I can kind of pull it and style it and let it fall where I want it to and let it dry that way so that I can get the direction of the hair. All right, so I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut like just a good amount. I'm gonna keep this pretty thin so I'm not gonna use too much hair. I think that's good. So about there is where I wanna cut it. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab it really tight and I'm just gonna kind of try to pull it out. And then uh, I'm gonna, Leave that for now, but as I put them on, right before I put it on, I'm gonna recut that to get it kind of as straight as possible. But I wanna thin this out on the table. So now they're just kind of bits that I can just grab little clumps of and, and rip off 
So I'm going to go ahead and do my bead and I think I want the hairline to be kind of far back and then I want to pull the hair forward. And so I can always add more if it's too far back, but I'm just going to start here um, just a bit right there and then stuff going both ways. All right. Um, and then as far as putting it on, put a little bit of silicone on this, like just a few different spots. And then this is like the key here. I'm going to pull back with my left hand like that. I want to pull back, but I'm going to push forward with this. And I can like grab up all these pieces so there's no stragglers. And then now it's like together and I can just go on here. All right. Um, so I'm all finished up putting the hair on. Uh, last minute I decided to add some to the back. I wasn't concerned with making it look too pretty though. I just threw on a thin layer and, and cut another piece of hair off real quick and put it on there. Um, Cause I want it to set up at relatively the same speed. So I wanted to just get it on there as soon as possible. All right, so uh, the silicone's totally cured. It's not sticky or anything. And you know, I, I do like the hairline. I like how far back it is honestly. When you look at it from the front, I think it looks pretty cool. And then, so you see like down here, this thing's pretty high up and it's still like bunching up at the bottom on the back cause it's pretty long. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna trim it a little bit, but I do like that shape. Almost all my masks have like a slight like mullet shape. Um, I don't know why, but um, I'm gonna pick it up and just kind of trim it at the bottom a little bit. And then whenever I put it on a shelf, his hair is gonna kind of, you know, get bunched up at the bottom, but I'm fine with that. Uh, I want him to have like long hair, but yeah. I'm pretty happy with that, um, especially for having pretty much no idea what I was going to do. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I really just started spraying colors on this thing. I, I had pulled this guy out of my, you know, like collection of Tots masks just as something fun to do. Um, it, again, this is totally just a fun project for me. I didn't know exactly what I wanted him to look like when I was done. I just wanted to have fun and paint and not have to do it for anyone else or anything. I love doing masks for other people. I'm super fortunate that I get to a lot of the time. Um, but sometimes you want to just do a fun project for no other reason than just, just to have fun with it. And then to have a cool mask at the end. Like I'm pretty happy to add this to my collection. All right, that's going to do it. I'm all wrapped up on the Ghastly Ghoul. Um, I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. My job was pretty easy working from such a cool sculpt by Justin. Um, he did an amazing job with this mask. It's his, his ghastly ghoul mask, um, but there's been a lot of different colorways. And this one's similar to like the skin tone version, but it's definitely different. I personalized it and made it my own. Um, but again, it was not very hard to make this mask look good. So um, we'll see you next week for another Mask Monday. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and visit us at nightmaretoys.com.